big day here, throne speech. I have to admit though, I was expecting something really out there and momentous, kind of like the free tuition in the budget last year. I was expecting a, a, a big surprise in this. Well, what we, what we did with the throne speech, or what the throne speech does, is set a context for the budget. So mm -hmm. the details will come in the budget. Um, what we wanted people to take away from the throne speech was that caring mm -hmm. and uh, making sure that there are the supports in place for people to care for themselves and for each other is, is where we need to go right now. And it's, you know, it's part of a fair society. If we're, going to, if we're going to have a fair society, people need to be able to care for each other and for themselves. Is that a new theme? for your government? Well, it's, for me, it's an extension of fairness because uh, if, if we come together and we make decisions about uh, how we create a fair society, a big part of that has to be, well, how are we going to, how are we going to deal with the real concerns in people's lives? And what I hear the real concerns to be are, you know, what are my kids going to do? What, did, what are their jobs going to look like? Um, how am I going to look after my, uh, my children? And how am I going to look after my parents or my grandparents at the same time? Um, how am I going to make sure that I ha still have a job? You know, what's the, what does the future hold for me? So those are real anxieties that people are carrying around. And that, that can wear people down. You know, it makes people fatigued and they, they need some support from each other. And that's, that's what the care agenda is about. Are you trying to out NDP the NDP once again and take over the left? I mean, we saw you do it in the last election and even this throne speech mentions more dental care for people who need it which is turning out to be one of their major planks well we've been but we've been talking about that for some time you know I've, I've heard that from people for some time and we um, so some of the directions that uh, the NDP is going the pharmacare dental care I mean we've already taken a big step forward on uh, on pharmacare and we know there's more to be done I know that dental care is a challenge for for so many people and so some of the ideas that the NDP are putting forward respond to the same anxieties that we are uh, that we're responding to Doug but Ford is saying you know all you need to do is cut corporate taxes and somehow all of that will magically be mm -hmm. uh, dealt with I don't believe that that's not my perspective but are you essentially trying to create two choices two stark opposing choices Doug Ford versus you uh, far right versus far left and, and completely squeeze the NDP out of the conversation well here's the thing um, I mean we can talk about Doug Ford but the fact is that all the conservative leadership candidates were talking about the same things. They were talking about cutting services, they were talking about cutting taxes, making it more difficult to actually put those supports in place. So I think that that stark choice is there for sure. And it's a choice between someone who's saying, I'm just going to cut taxes and that will look after everybody's uh, needs and, uh, and a, a government, a, a party that's saying, you know what? There are real challenges that people are facing in their day-to-day -day lives. We need to deal with them. Yes, we've done a lot, and our, uh, the speech from the throne laid out the things that we've done, whether it's free tuition or the OHIP Plus for kids, uh, a higher minimum wage, but there's more that needs to be done. What did you mean about lowering the cost for childcare? Are we looking at a Quebec-style system in the budget coming up? <laughs> um, this is Ontario. It'll be, uh, you know, it'll be uh, for the, the budget to lay out. but but. We know that affordability in childcare is a, a huge concern. Let's talk about the $8 billion deficit that is going to be in the budget. Are you handing a win to Doug Ford on a silver platter by announcing that? I mean, there is a, a large frustration amongst voters that have a perception that the Liberal government is spend, 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 spend. Are you not giving into that with an $8 billion deficit after promising to balance the books? Well, you know, here's, here's what we have done. We have uh, we've worked very hard to balance the budget. We've balanced the budget this year, and as we have, as we have listened to people around the province, as all of our members have, as I have, what we have heard is that people are grappling with real challenges in their lives. There's a lot of uncertainty. You know, it, there's global uncertainty about um, what work is going to look like, about climate change, about the pace of change that we're seeing in technology. There's real anxiety about uh, what comes next. 
And so we're responding to that. And so we will we will run a, a modest deficit. It's less than 1% of GDP once people see the budget. But we're doing that because we need to make these investments in people's lives. But people are unhappy with the Liberal government. I know you've heard this. There seems to be a massive pendulum swung. And once that pendulum swings, it's really hard to swing it back. How are you going to manage to do that? Do you think you can? I know you're going to tell me you don't really pay attention to polls, but come on, everybody pays a little bit of attention to them. So, so here's the thing. I have a, you know, I have a, a, a personal and a political experience. I'm, I'm one person who works with a great team, and my experience is that people want to come together to do the things that are going to help one another. That is, that is my experience. I got, into, I got into politics, as you well know, through publicly funded education, which I think is such a cornerstone of caring for one another and of our democracy. And so that's what I believe we come together to do. And so all I can do is pay really close attention to what I see in our society. And I, you know, I can tell you that there are many, many people like me who have aging parents, you know, my father's turning 92 tomorrow, my mom is 89, and when I go to see them, I'm going to see them to have a visit with them, but I'm also taking vegetables and fruit to make sure they sure. have the food that they need. So, so people are dealing with those kinds of stresses, and I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not suggesting that I have the burden of the world on my shoulders. I'm just saying that, that right now in our society, people are dealing with a lot of stressors, and they they want to look after themselves, they want to look after each other, but they need some help with that. For a government that wants to care and professes to care so much, why haven't you done anything about illegal group homes? Uh, at the end of last year, I was doing an investigation into them and found appallingly terrible conditions. Mm -hmm. People were dying in them, and yet the OPP put out a report well over a year ago, and your government's done absolutely nothing on well, this. Well, they are. They actually, the ministry is looking at how we can, because what you're talking about is regulation, right? right? You're and talking why about regulation. not regulate? Well, it, and and again, there, we're looking at what we can do to make sure that there is better control over the way people are. But but, but you've had years. Cynthia, it to actually look at this. it actually goes to what I was just saying, which is people with developmental disabilities, people living on the margins, mm -hmm. need more support. Support. Yes. What you're what you're saying is actually consistent with what I am talking about, which is that there are there are still people, and I you know I get that there's more that we need to do. That's exactly what the throne speech is about. But the Liberal government's had 15 years to do something about this, and the problem has only been growing. Another question. <laughs> well, I, I would suggest to you that we put $810 million into mm -hmm. helping people with developmental disabilities. There's more that we need to do, and there's more that we need to do in terms of supportive housing, and that addresses directly the issue that you're talking about. Does the thought of Premier Doug Ford send a shiver up your spine? There's no love lost between you. We have very different perspectives on exactly what we're talking about. He believes that people can fend for themselves, he just has to cut taxes. I have a very different perspective. I think people need support and that we need to put more of that support in place. Is it keeping you up at night though? Come on, you've seen the polls. You know what? Honestly, what keeps me up at night is finding the right balance of supports that to put in place because there is so much that needs to be done and as I said we've spent a number of years fueling the economy building infrastructure we've got good economic growth in uh, in Ontario and we've put in support we've put in place supports in uh, in education we put in place supports in health care but there's more that needs to be done and that's what keeps me up at night because there are people when I go to those town halls when I knock on doors in my own riding when I travel the province I hear from people who are looking to us and looking to society for more help. They're looking for more support, and that's what the that's what this is about. So my last question, because I'm getting the the yeah, wrap yeah, behind yeah, yeah. me, and as you mentioned when you arrived, I always save my best for last. <laughs> and I'm going to end this interview the way I ended an interview a, a year ago. We were mm -hmm. standing right about here, and I said, "When does a politician know it's time to say enough and that it's time to leave?" And can they overstay their welcome? Are you concerned with your numbers in the polls that that is going to happen this election? Well, I made a commitment at, at that time and, uh, and before mm -hmm. that I was going to run in the, uh, in the provincial election in 2018. I'm going to do that. June 7th? June not, 7th. It's not going to change? It's not No changing. snap election no June 7th? No snap election June 7th. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Good to see you. Thanks.